Ouch. That stung and it still hurts a lot. I'm not gonna lie to you. Doesn't feel quite right wearing this. But yeah. Um, hello, my soccer universe. Right after a game. The Champions League is on one side a cruel competition, on the other side it proved again it's the most exciting competition around. No lead is safe. And that's what makes it great. Again, I tried to collect myself. This I thought actually this game was even better than yesterday. Not better in the terms of style of play, but I think there was more excitement because there were, yesterday it was really... There wasn't much coming from Barcelona anymore. Today uh, it could easily have gone both ways. And yeah. I was nervous ahead of the game. I knew that Ajax at home is not as strong as Ajax away. Um, I knew they are young and I might get ahead of themselves. My nerves were calm for the first time after <laughs> barely four minutes when the Licht scored after a corner after uh, Tadic missed a big chance. Again, I didn't make notes. I, I realized yesterday, even if I would, uh, I'm way too fixed on the screen. I, I, it's on the first leg, it's probably better. I probably have to get better at that uh, more. Um, practice also last week I was on a vacation so it was a little bit more relaxed in many ways yeah Tadic had a big chance if like the shot was saved by Yoris uh, corner De Ligt um, Trippier completely lo lose him no one picks him up ahead at home no overtime okay we're fine we'll go to bed at a decent time hopefully uh, depending how long this video will be now uh, and then Spurs comes right back with Son hitting the post. I mean, I was most afraid of Son today, although, uh, to be honest, he didn't show as much um, as you usually see from him. But right there, it was two minutes after the goal, um, he hit the post, he aimed for the near corner, uh, was kind of unlucky. And that kind of set the tone for the game. Then the, uh, Spurs had a slight period of dominance where, yeah, they didn't get anything really that's got on the score sheet, but you could feel that Ajax is not playing the Ajax way. Not this uh, dominant, uh, I don't care, passing around, moving around, fluid style. I was a little bit more nervous. They showed, they had occasional flashes, but it didn't really come a lot. And yeah, uh, Ziyech actually makes it 2-0. Again, I don't want to say out of nowhere, because at that moment Ajax got control of the game anymore, but it was not as safe. Uh, and even at 2-0, I knew I was a little bit more relieved. I mean, 1-0, if you have won the uh, home leg 1-0, is one of those results where if you just end up leaking a goal, the house is on fire. With 2-0, it's a little bit more of a cushion, but... <laughs> No cushy safe. I mean, you have a 3-0 overall lead, but you also know that the away goals rule will be kicking. Um, and you know already the result. I'm wearing Tottenham. You know Tottenham made it through. Um, the away goals, away goals rules stung here, but I'm still in favor of it. I wouldn't want to see overtime here. I think it was... I like that everything can change with one goal up or down. And because otherwise, you know, you get the equalizer and then, okay, we play for a penalty shootout. I really like that the away goals are counted here. Um, as much as I'm not in favor of the result. Uh, yesterday with Liverpool, I actually, as I said, it was half, half, happy, sad, happy, sad. Today, I was fully invested into Ajax and I don't want to take any way, any, any, anything away from Spurs. I, Although I have proclaimed that I am not the biggest Spurs fan, which is true, um, I always had some liking there. I think it started when I know that Lineker played there. And I liked Gary Lineker when I was growing up. I mean, he was the big English star. Still like Gary Lineker, to be honest. Um, so from that moment on, there was always, you know, slight sympathy for Spurs, uh, not being a fan. But I knew when I was in London, when I got these shirts, that yeah, I have to go to White Hart Lane. This is White Hart Lane. I gotta get a uh, Spurs shirt too. Although back then they were nothing to talk home about. That's why I got also the shirt over here. 
Well, what can I tell you? Uh, second half starts and Llorente comes on. And Ajax actually was missing Neres and that's, I was, a, I was whole hoping it will not be a big miss, but I think the Ajax was missing something down the left side, um, not having Neres. I mean, Tadic and Sieg played over a good game, although a little bit sloppy, but uh, Neres, I think that was, that was a serious miss for Ajax. Um, there was a lot of dynamics got lost. And you could already see that Ajax, and also Donny van der Beek, I didn't see, I mean, he was outstanding in the first leg and so he was not really there today. So yeah, uh, you could see there's some nervousness there. It's not necessarily their game and didn't help them. You know, the crowd is behind them, but you feel it even more. You cannot be as easy. So yeah. Where am I getting? Lucas Moura puts one back after there were very few chances and um, it was through Dele Alli. I mean, Dele Alli had a big shot before and then Dele Alli, uh, he just went through and um, he let L Lucas Moura have the ball who slots it home 2-1 and my wife said, yeah, they are very aggressive now and of course they needed to be aggressive. I mean, this was their last chance. Two minutes later, I think they uh, shot something wide and said, okay, it's not going to be like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Then a uh, great save from Onana on Llorente, where Llorente gets the ball back and does not know where, where, where it is. I mean, Llorente is basically a um, foreign object in the Spurs squad. Uh, and he's clumsy as hell, but somehow he makes, a, he makes his impact. He gets the ball, Onana gets it off him and just needs to get on it. And I thought that the scene is over, but Schöne is there and there's no calm communication. The ball comes loose, gets to Mura. And then what Mura does, I mean, it was scrappy until that point. But then what Mura does, back of the goal, has good control, knows exactly where the goal stands, moves around, puts it in the net, 2-2, more than half an hour to go. And I got nervous, but my nerves can't because Ajax at least got back into the game. Yes, Spurs were, were dang, dangerous and Ajax had to hold them at bay, but I think for the next 20 or so minutes Ajax actually could calm the game down, which is something Barcelona couldn't yesterday. Um, and they had chances. They got chances, and most not, not least through Ziyech, who hit the post, uh, also missed another chance that much wide. Uh, there was also a counter-attack very, 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 very late between Ziyech and Tadic, where they actually had a, at least a 2-2, two and two, if not a 2-1, um, where they need to get some sort of something going. Tadic cannot just put it wide over. Uh, similar when they defended a corner late on. Um, they got a corner in the 91st minute, and they want to play it at the corner, and then Tadic wants to play too cute and gets it out of the box. That's vital seconds thrown away uh, and on those little things the game can turn. But uh, I'm saying like Ajax had control but in the last 10 minutes every ball going into the Ajax box and I even was afraid that Onana will uh, spill it. Onana I think is a great goalkeeping talent but he has this occasion. He, remind, he reminds me a lot on, about Dida. Uh, for Milan, who also for the longest of times you knew who you have, you have a good goalkeeper, but Dida always had this uh, mistake in him every single time, and you were never really safe. And Onana reminds me a lot about him. Um, there were two or three seasons, but then there was also a huge chance. I think it went to Vertongen, played with a mask. Ball comes to Vertongen. Uh, he just gets on it, it goes against the crossbar where um, Onana is also there and it falls back on him and then it's cleared off the line. I was sigh of relief over, over and over, but it was also, you know, in the back of my head is, you know, Spurs is having chance after chance after chance and it will eventually pay off because Ajax is missing their chances. And then I thought in stoppage time, okay, yeah, they missed this corner, but... There was one chance that Son took, was not great. Uh, it looked safe. It looked safe. And I'm afraid this is what Ajax thought too. Ball comes to Lucas Mura and he slots it in. And Onana was out of position, as was the Licht. And it's the 96th minute and it hurts. 
I mean, you could say that they were deflated. I mean, I like the kick of kick of all the Ajax players at the midline and going for. And I really thought it was safe because at that moment, you know, there was the one corner where Yoris is coming in front and you had it. You had it there. You just need to keep the ball. You need to hold on for one more minute. I mean, I know holding on for a minute is not that easy, but uh, get the game in the other half. Go to the corner, like dribble yourself through, play, but you could feel the nervousness and you could feel nervousness everywhere. So yeah, Spurs goes through and it really hurt. And I was cursing uh, when that goal went in was hoping that something magically will happen, not, no, nothing happened. But then when I see um, at the final whistle uh, Pochettino's emotions, then I think, okay, I said it already today that I would find it really, really harsh on Spurs if there will be an all-London final in Baku and Spurs has to miss out in the semi-final. It would be very Spursy, but um, it would not feel right. Uh, so yeah, we have an English final, a uh, one thing that a week ago we didn't expect uh, at all, I would say, but we have this English final and so be it. Uh, I'm not a fan of all English. I really would have liked uh, two different countries. I would have loved Liverpool against Ajax, especially I would have given Ajax the advantage because as I said yesterday, the Premier League ends this weekend and then there's a huge break. Now, on the other side, I'm a little bit happy. Now it's more even where you don't have this issue anymore. Will be an all England final, same preparation for everyone. I do somehow wish that Kane comes back, but I doubt it. Same thing for Solan Firmino. I hope that these three weeks that they have will give them the chance to get fit and maybe we see best on best. And Liverpool will be the favourites, but I personally have to tell you, I think um, it will be a final that can, I, I can enjoy maybe a little bit more, because I will be neutral um, on that one. Maybe slight favour to Liverpool, although I really can see the Spurs story. Uh, that would be a great story in, in, it, in itself. They kicked out Manchester City uh, in dramatic fashion yesterday again. I mean, they are the comeback kids. Uh, also the way they got out, uh, out of the group stage. So, I mean, there's a lot of perseverance going through, which is a great storyline. So maybe for that reason, um, yeah, I cannot really tell you where I am. Uh, I think it. I could see both stories. Um, I would love to see Klopp finally win the Champions League. I think Liverpool would deserve to win a great, a great trophy, big trophy this season. They totally would. But I think same thing, if Spurs wins it, um, you couldn't say it would not be deserved at all. And I would also like that Pochettino lifts finally a trophy that's worth something. Uh, now, from the Milan point of view, if Liverpool wins it, they're just one behind uh, Milan, which yeah would make me a little bit nervous. But, you know, that's maybe the smallest thing. I think I will probably enjoy this final it's not the Johan Cruyff final, the one that I probably wanted to see. Um, I would have been excited for Liverpool Ajax, but I'm also, you know, I have to get over now this pain. I really wanted Ajax to be in the final because that would be my story of the season. If Ajax won the Champions League again, uh, that would be would, would, would be in my the best story. The second best story actually would be probably Spurs winning uh, with Liverpool's probably. Uh, behind, but it's not such an underdog story. Liverpool was always among the circle of favorites. But there you go. Madrid, get ready for an English invasion. It's going to be a curious one. Uh, probably an interesting matchup. I think this could be a really, really, really good final. And we'll see. Uh, and <laughs> while it's not exactly, uh, it fits to Madrid. We have the red against the white. Not quite, but almost there. Okay, now that I talk to you, I feel slightly better about the whole thing. Could talk it all out, I think. Um, as I said, watching the pictures, I needed to do that to actually see uh, how Tottenham deserved it and you know, uh, detach myself a little bit from it. Um, and it, is, it was not as hard because, as I said, 
Tottenham is not a team I dislike. If this would have been Bayern, I would have been still devastated, but this, it doesn't hurt as much. But I really wanted Ajax to win. Um, probably gonna wear a hockey jersey tomorrow, whoever wins, Fs or Sharks. So. <sighs> Let's take it. Tomorrow, Europa League semi-final. Maybe there will be more twists and turns. <laughs> At the moment we say it's an all London final, it might not be. Don't count out Valencia. Let me know what you thought about the game tonight, the games tomorrow, whatever, whatever you want to share. Drop it down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.